Auxin is arguably the most important hormone in plant development, and it influences all stages of plant development from germination through to making fruit and, uh, and seeds. Now, in this course, we're not going to go into the myriad functions of, uh, of auxin, how it functions. Um, just going to give you a quick list of what it's involved in. It's involved in growth. It's involved in phototropism and gravitropism. We'll talk a little bit more about that soon. It's involved in branching of the plant. It's involved in the development of the seed. Um, it's involved in the development of the meristems. Uh, but I want to talk for a second about two of its main roles. One is in initiation of roots. Auxin is the hormone which causes roots to form. And auxin is the hormone which stimulates cells to elongate. So let's talk about this role, that one of the major roles of auxin is to stimulate cell elongation. I want to tell you one other thing, is that one of the major sites where auxin is produced is at the tip of, this, of the shoot, which is called the shoot meristem. Those are the embryonic cells of the green part of the plant at the top. So auxin is made in the shoot meristem at the tip of the seedling, and it's one of its major roles is to stimulate cell elongation. But can you see a problem here vis-a-vis -vis phototropism? Now, I said that auxin is produced at the tip, but what we saw from all the experiments was that the elongation happened further down the stalk. So how can we solve this conundrum that while auxin is needed for elongation, we don't get elongation at the tip? Well, the answer is that the effect of a hormone is dependent on several factors. And this is not only true for phytohormones, it's also true for hormones in our own body. The action of a hormone is dependent on where it's functioning. The same hormone can have different functions in different parts of the body when it's functioning, at what developmental stage, and also the concentration of the hormone. A single hormone can have different functions at high and at low concentrations. And that's actually what's going on here. So for example, we know that at very high concentrations, auxin actually inhibits cell elongation. It keeps cells small. But as the, the concentration is diluted, as it gets slightly lower, then it, inhibit, then it induces cell elongation until then it's so diluted that it stops uh, causing cell elongation. So at the top, we're having a very, at the tip of the seedling, we have a very high concentration of auxin. There's no cell elongation. And apparently as it goes down the stalk, you're getting a lessening of the, a reduction in its concentration. And there you're getting the cell elongation. So what we're assuming here is that we have a higher concentration of auxin on the dark side of the plant than on the light side. And this is exactly what's been shown in subsequent studies. When the light is shown onto the seedling, the auxin accumulates on the dark side, and there you're getting more elongation such that the seedling is then bending towards the light.